Breaking news. Adobe has released an important update to both Lightroom Classic and Lightroom. I'm going to show you how all of these features work. Some of them will completely change your pictures, allowing you to automatically eliminate noise and improve detail in the most important parts of your pictures in ways that otherwise would have taken a long time. Also, if you're interested in the Canon R7, Chelsea and I are currently working on our review and we're going to be looking at some of the pictures in this video. First, I want to thank our sponsor, Squarespace. No matter what type of website you need, head to squarespace.com slash Tony to set it up. Portfolios, businesses, projects, Whatever it is, you can get your own private domain, your own private email address, really detailed analytics, the ability to reach out to your customers, set up a store, take appointments. It all starts at squarespace.com slash Tony with a completely free trial. Set it up and once you love it, use the coupon code Tony and that'll get you 10% off. First of all, I'm talking about Lightroom and Lightroom Classic, two different apps. If you want to try either one of them, head to sdp.io slash Adobe Deal. And if you want to learn how to get the most out of them, Chelsea and I have written books on both. We have books on Lightroom Classic and the brand new, just finished Lightroom book. Well, I finished it last year, but the paperback finally arrived. So we are shipping autographed copies of the Lightroom book. If you buy the Lightroom book from our store at northrop.photo, there's still an active coupon code up at the top and we will autograph it and ship it out to all around the world. Thank you. The first big improvement is that Adobe has added support for the Canon R7, the Canon R10, and the Fujifilm X-H2S. One of the most common questions I get is, why can't I import the RAW files from my new camera into Lightroom 6 or Lightroom 5 that I bought some number of years ago? The answer is you have to have the Lightroom subscription to either Lightroom or Lightroom Classic in order to process the RAW files for new cameras. Now I want to show you preset intensity adjustments. Before, when you were to apply a preset, it was all or nothing. Now you can adjust them from 0% all the way up to 200%. Here's a studio portrait of Chelsea taken with the new R7 and some of the presets here. Of course, I can hover over the presets to find one that I like, but let's say that I like this one but it's just a little too intense, a little too gold. I can click it and you can see up here, now it's showing the preset and the amount. So I could drag it up and make her super orange, or I could just drag it down. You can see this is with the preset off and I can drag it up just until I like it. And so I like it eh, about one third of the way up. Standard Lightroom also has this feature. Let me show you how to use it real quick. Pick your picture, go into the presets panel, and now you can pick a preset that you like like that one, and you'll see the amount slider appears here, so you can drag it up or down. And again, you can see this was taken with the Canon R7. Another huge advancement is adaptive presets. Let's jump into Lightroom and I'll show you how this works. Here's a candid photo of Chelsea at dinner. If I go down to the presets panel, you can see new adaptive presets here, adaptive subject. These presets will apply just to the subject of the photo, not impacting the background. So you can see warm pop here adjusts the color of the subject, Chelsea's face, without changing the color of the background. This is perfect for instantly adding sort of a sunset lighting effect to a portrait or wildlife photography, anything that Lightroom can detect as a subject. Here I can add the glow effect to her skin and soft will reduce the amount of texture in the skin just to soften it up a little bit. Without soft, with soft. But you can see if you look in the background, there's no difference. This works exactly the same in standard Lightroom. The next change is going to save me so much time processing large groups of portraits or wildlife photography where I apply different processing to the subject and the background. You can now do the select subject, select sky, or invert that across many pictures at a single time, or you can copy the settings from one picture and paste them onto the other pictures. Now, with earlier versions of Lightroom, if you selected the subject, applied processing to the subject and then pasted that to a different picture, it would keep the same outline of the subject on the picture that you pasted it to rather than reselecting the subject in the destination photo. It was incredibly dumb. I was so mad that Lightroom skipped that obvious opportunity, but they finally caught up at my request and gave you the copy AI selection tool. So let's check it out. Here's a series of photos Chelsea took with the Canon R7 from the kayak, and you can see it's a very bright subject against a very dark background. Here's how I'd process that for a single picture. Going into the develop mode, I'm going to select the selection tool and then select subject. And if I press O, you can see it does a pretty good job of selecting the subject. And so for this, I'm gonna bring the highlights down so it's not overexposed. But I'm also going to increase the sharpness here and increase the texture. 
Now I see quite a bit of noise here because it was in the shade and taken with a high shutter speed. So let's reduce the amount of noise by dragging the noise slider up. Now I've applied the optimal settings for the subject. I want to apply separate settings for the entire rest of the picture. Here's something else you could do. This is actually a new feature. I'm going to right click the mask and click duplicate and invert mask. So now if I press O, you can see everything except the bird is selected. So to this, I'm actually going to increase the exposure a little bit, brighten the shadows some. And you know, if we zoom in, we see a ton of noise because it's deep in shadow. I can crank the noise reduction up here because I know I'm not losing any detail. In fact, I'll also lower the texture to further smooth out the background. This is essentially adding more bokeh. And so now zooming around, there's no noise apparent in the background, but I haven't lost any detail because none of that was important detail to begin with. That's why I love creating separate masks for the subject and the background. Now, in the previous version of Lightroom, I would have to manually go back and create those masks for every one of those other pictures in order to get the same results. But in the new version of Lightroom, watch what I can do. I'll switch back to the grid view here. I'm going to copy these settings, develop settings, copy or control shift C. And now look over here, there's a masking select box that I can select. I'll select that to also copy those masks. And with that copied, I can now paste it to all these other pictures that were taken in similar conditions. Control shift V to paste them. And now you can see it's updating the AI mask. It does take an extra second because it has to go find the subject and then invert it for everything. And well, so now if we look at this picture where the subject's in a totally different place, I'll go into the develop module and look at the mask here. You can see both the original and the inverted mask are completely different than the original. They've been recalculated. And if I zoom way in, you can see it did give me the settings that I want. You can see the background has the texture reduced and the noise suppressed, and the foreground has had the noise reduced and the sharpening increased. Of course, that's available in standard Lightroom too. Thank you so much Adobe for providing that. That is going to save me so much time in processing large amounts of photos. Moving on, standard Lightroom now gives you the ability to edit videos. Lightroom Classic has had this for a long time, but Lightroom has lacked it. Let's take a look at how that works. Here's a bunch of videos from the Canon R7. I'll drag those in. I can shorten it by dragging the edges in. I could rotate it. I could also go into the settings here and change the exposure. Okay, you know what? Editing videos in Lightroom sucks. Lightroom Classic Lightroom, it just, I would never recommend it. It's so bad and it's a brand new feature that they were flexing about. And I go to try it with a seven second video and it's just completely non-functional. I tried it with longer videos and I just had to force quit Lightroom. So. Okay, don't try to edit your videos in Lightroom. Chances are good you have a free video editing app that came with your computer or your phone or whatever that works way better. So let's move on from this bad feature. Another cool feature in standard Lightroom is automatic red eye removal. If you ever use on camera flash and it creates that ugly reflection in the eyes, you've always been able to manually remove it by selecting the eyes, but this saves you a couple of clicks. Not a big deal, but I'll show you quickly how it works. Here's the red eye example from Wikipedia that I use because it's public domain. If I go over to the healing tool here, you can now see this. Click this and then click autocorrect. And well, it only found one eye. Okay, it's not perfect. You'd think it could have found both eyes in that subject, but don't worry, you can always go back and manually add eyes. Simply start in the middle of the eye and drag it outside until you completely cover the red part of the eye and then let go. Not perfect, better than nothing. An advancement that I think is huge in standard Lightroom is side-by-side -side comparisons. This was one feature that kept me from recommending standard Lightroom and kept me personally using Lightroom Classic. I'll show you how it works. So often after a portrait or wildlife shoot, I'm going through all the different pictures looking for maybe the sharpest example. Now I can click two pictures and then click down here or press Alt-C, Option-C. And now you can see, I can see both pictures side by side. This is side by side, but I could also go vertical here and I could swap them back and forth with this button. You can also use that on Lightroom Mobile on your phone. A feature that's unique to standard Lightroom is Discover and Remix. Here you can find other people's photos that they've shared and edit them and then share them with the community. So you can see another photographer's work, take their raw files and put your own spin on editing it. It is an amazing way to practice. I'll show you how it works. In Lightroom, I'm going to pull up the left panel here and then I'm going to go to discover and then remixes. You can see under just remix here, I can see other people's edits. Oh, this is a good one filled with moods. Let's open it up. Then I can go into remix original here 
grab the original file and make my own changes to it. And if I click next, then I can go in and actually share it with the rest of the community so other people can look at it. Again, if you don't yet have Lightroom or Lightroom Classic, head to stp.io slash Adobe link to start your free trial with either one and head to northrop.photo to check out our brand new Lightroom book. All paperback copies are going to be shipped signed or our Lightroom Classic book. Both of them include a ton of video sample files and presets to play with. And of course, thank you to our sponsor Squarespace. Get your own private domain name that fits you so you're not using gmail.com anymore. Get your own space on the web that isn't controlled by a social media company. Take appointments from clients, sell prints, set up a store for any type of business at squarespace.com slash Tony. I think I have five or six Squarespace websites because I set one up for every new project that I start because I just like everything to have its own page. Once again, squarespace.com slash Tony. And when you love it, use the coupon code Tony and you'll get 10% off your subscription. Thanks so much, Squarespace. In the comments down below, I'd love to hear what you think of these new Lightroom edits. And I'm planning to finally compare Lightroom against On One, Capture One, and other post-processing software. So I'd like to hear what you think I should compare. Bye.